My name is Leo Young and today I'm going to be discussing the On Cloud Spike. Now this spike is a extremely popular spike online. People are talking about it, people are really interested in it, but there's very little information about it. So I'm going to try to um, fill the void that's out there right now. I'll be covering what I think of them, when to use them, why they perform, and when they fail. Sound like The first thing that's most important is just to clear up, I'm not an on-athlete and I'm not an athlete affiliated with any brand and I often use spikes of all different brands depending on what works best for me um, in the moment. But this is an awesome spike so I'm going to be covering all about it. The first thing is what I think of them. In short, I really, really like them. I think that they are a tremendous spike with great, great uh, potential and they feel terrific. Um, my experience with them is pretty, I think it's pretty extensive. I've been using them for the last four months or so, training in them and racing in them, and they feel great. That means, um, that means at least one or two workouts a week, uh, a few, one, one to two races a month, right? So that's good use, that's a lot of use, a lot of miles, enough that one of my pairs actually started to wear out quite a bit, and I'm noticing that it's significantly more worn than this is my this is the pair that I'm reserving for races right now so they're a little bit worn but not so much um, yeah I went over that these are a pretty popular spike online and there's a lot of lot of talk about them but that doesn't necessarily give them validity or confirm that they can do what they're uh, what they're boasting so um, me personally I've run 339 in them a few times in the 1500 which for me is my personal PR um, that's the same time that I ran in the Nike victory spikes um, in the 1500 so I guess they're they're very comparable in that sense um, Lex personally has run uh, 1334 in the 5k and then there he is right there in the frame um, and uh, well yeah and also many professional athletes use them in their racing so um, there is there's there's a lot to say about their validity in terms of performance um, but one thing that I want to talk about in terms of what I think of them is they're really, really comfortable. That's an area that is kind of overlooked in terms of racing shoes because uh, most people don't really care that much about comfort because at the end of the day, it's the performance that really matters. But despite that, I found that these shoes are really comfortable. Um, the design itself, it's a rather thick upper, but it feels really, really good on the foot. I, uh, I personally choose to lace them really, really tight. And as a result of that, my foot feels like it's often like one with the shoe. So when I'm doing a workout or in a race, like there's no there's no um, movement between me and the shoe. Um, it's very much one, and I think that makes it a lot easier to uh, perform the level at the level you want when there's it just doesn't feel shifty. It feels comfortable. Um, next, I'll be covering when to use these spikes, um, and to do that, I'm going to divide it up into two different categories which would be a comfortable pace and a really fast pace. So first off, a comfortable pace. Where do these, how do these perform at more of a comfortable pace? And by comfortable pace, I don't mean uh, jogging seven minute pace or even tempoing at a five minute pace, something like that. I'm, I'm more referring to like that, that threshold right before um, you feel like you're really moving. So like more like a 5K, 8K pace where you're going really quick, but you're not quite going all out and you're still reserving a few more gears for uh, kicking or anything like that, right? So at that pace, honestly, these things are pretty stellar, right? I think they work really well. However, where they shine is probably at the, the full speed kind of pace. But like I said about Lex um, running a 5K in them, obviously they perform at that level as well, right? Um, so during a workout, I like to use them for pretty much anything, anywhere where I would use spikes, I pretty much use these spikes. And um, at a more comfortable pace, they feel good because they've got quite a bit of cushion in there, so they're comfortable, and you don't feel like it's necessarily taking a hit at, you know, the, the um, confidence, and you're not, it's not hurting your legs to use, like most spikes would be at a more, at a, at a slower space. Um, you know, this is, well, this is a trait that I see with a lot of modern spikes, is that they're comfortable at more paces than before. Um, Okay, at a speed pace, um, yeah, these things feel really, really good. Um, I was discussing what I think of them and why um, they're really, really comfortable, and I think that, in combination with what I'll soon to what I'll soon discuss about um, why they perform, is why they feel so good at uh, a fast pace. 
Um, so if I'm doing really fast 400s to train for a 1500, um, often the pace will be even faster than my 1500 race pace. And these things are right there along with me for the ride. Um, at that pace, they feel really, really springy and they feel really, really responsive, which means that when you're going all out around a track, they just feel like they're part of you. And I think that is the biggest thing in terms of training is it just like, um, not to, not, to dis, not to be mean to them or anything, but like they're insignificant when you're running, right? Because you're not even worried about them because they're doing their job perfectly. Um, why does this spike perform? It's pretty simple. There's a few things um, and they come down to shoe design. So in, in this spike, On has combined uh, two of their foams. I believe it's their CloudTech foam and their Helion foam which uh, essentially would give it like the super shoe designation. And that just means that it's gonna be uh, lighter and more responsive than a typical foam that's found in a shoe. And that's what makes all the shoes people are seeing these days so awesome. And it's not just about making them faster, they're also better for your legs and it makes it so then there's less impact going into your legs and you can stay a lot healthier and train a lot harder, which makes people faster. The other thing this bike has is a fiberglass nylon plate, which spans the full length of it. And that's what gives it its really, uh, really noticeable springy feeling. I think that if there's one way to describe the spike when running on it, running in it, it's uh, responsive and springy. And that's all thanks to uh, the design that I was just discussing. The final topic to discuss is when these spikes fail, because obviously they do like any other shoe. Um, to do that, I'll pull out my, my other pair that I started with that I'm now using for workouts, just, you know, as an example. Um, uh, okay, so in this bag, which is the Nike bag, because they don't come with a spike bag, um, is, uh, okay, so this is my last pair. Um, I'm sure this angle is probably going to get a good close up. Hold it still. There we are. Um, yeah, this pair is pretty beat up. I've used, I've used them quite a bit. This is the pair that I've been using the longest and um, I've raced them a few times, but I don't race them anymore. I race in this pair now and I've reserved this pair for racing. Um, however, okay, so this pair, uh, obviously it's shown significant wear and it's also, um, we've also noticed, I've also noticed uh, performance decreases in it in terms of uh, using it over time compared to a less worn out pair. Um, I'd say some of its qualities that I was discussing, you know, how it's most noticeably, no, most notably uh, springy and responsive, um, those qualities have diminished a bit over time, but they're still in league with any other performance spike. Um, it's, it's all very marginal, but it definitely, there is a, there is a noticeable um, decrease. However, um, they still feel great and I still use them for every workout and I'm not really thinking during the workout like, oh man, these things feel worn out, you know? It's like most spikes you put on. They feel great regardless. Um, okay, so the other thing that I noticed about these that are a place where they fail rather um, would be in terms of uh, the upper. Um, I mentioned how the upper is really, really comfortable, but I think the fabric could also use some uh, changing because it is also a little bit weak. Um, if you can kind of punch in right here, um, it ripped. Yeah, if you look right here, um, the spike actually ripped uh, right here. There's a rip in it. Um, the eyelet, the eyelet towards the top ripped. This happened right before our race, which is kind of stressful. Um, but as a result, I just laced them up tighter and basically disregarded the fact that one of the eyelets ripped. And I've since noticed no real performance decrease because of it. It's just kind of awkward looking at your shoe and seeing that one of the eyelets ripped. But um, however, that does that's that is that is something to keep in mind, right? Because if the shoe is ripping, um, that definitely needs to be changed in future models, but it's a great shoe. Uh, the only other uh, problem that I've had with these shoes is they definitely, in my experience, run a little bit big. So um, in total, I've gone through three pairs of them because I had a, uh, I started with a size 10 because normally I'm a size 10, right? So I ordered a size 10, but it was ridiculously big. I put it on and it seriously, it just did not fit me. It was like, it was humongous. and that was not something that I could really work out in or race in or run in. So I had to, I swapped them out, got a, got a size nine and a half and it fit perfectly. So totally, that's good, right? I think it's just really important to keep in mind um, how they fit. So they definitely fit on the larger side, but once I got the size nine and a half, I tied those really, really tight and they felt really good. Perfect. Um, let me put these to the side and then we can, then I can wrap up my thoughts. All right. So 
I'll conclude the video now. Um, hopefully it's not too dark out. We are filming a little bit uh, late tonight. I think we're probably at ISO like 12,000, something ridiculous. Um, so hopefully it looks okay. If it does, I guess that's a testament to Fujifilm. But um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, just to conclude it, I really like the spike. I found that it feels really great at, at a comfortable pace and a really fast pace, which is something that you know more and more brands are able to do in spikes these days. Um, the most notable qualities of it would be that it is extremely bouncy and responsive, which is um, everyone prefers different things, but I really, really like that in a spike and that's what I look for. Um, and then I guess the last thing would be, uh, yeah, it has its faults, but it sure does. It sure comes around and works great. and. I, I really enjoy it and this track season, it's been my pick. Um, I'll see what I pick in the future track seasons, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really hope uh, this was interesting. I know this bike's super talked about, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll talk later.